when last we left our intrepid adventurers, um, we were headed for the old abandoned temple district. In Allen, excuse me, in Allenway, the safest city in the world. Otherwise known as the cursed city. Yeah. So, um, we go to the uh, the temple, and it's basically this temple is just like some walls, outer walls left. It's all completely ruined. There's no roof. There's no. Well, that's just doors. the part. The part you're at. Part of it is also hadn't made a layout yet, so. <laughs> yeah, anyway, the part you were at was like... Yeah. Anyway. So you go in there, tap around, and see where the dungeon entrance is or whatever. Or, ideally, there'll just be some drow standing there with a knife to the, this hostage's throat, and we'll say, hey, what do you want? And she'll say, the box, please. And we'll say, are you sent by Kalinar uh, Drago? And she'll say, yes. And then we'll give him the box and get 500 gold, and it'll all be over. But that's not what happened. <laughs> that was a solid plan. Oh yeah. In your dreams. Yeah. yeah. Well. So, so we just to remind you, they're 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 rescuing the husband and daughter of this woman who came to ask their help because this drow came in and blasted their house for no reason, mm -hmm. and now her husband and daughter are missing. Oh, yeah. And. They heard someone saw her heading towards the old temple district. And the town guard is useless, as usual. Well, it's the safest city in the world. Of course. Why would they have a town guard? So. They're busy interrogating people who are trying to enter the city. They still have a town guard. They're just not very competent. Yeah. So. We enter this area, and uh, there were some perception checks, I think. Uh, who succeeded in the perception check? I think Hank did. And maybe, or was it, I know one person did. Yeah. Who was it? Was it Serendipity Vindal starting up with Tower Shepherd of Souls? I think so. Okay. That's, excuse me, that's right, because she had something readied mm. that would only go off um, if attackers were within 10 squares. I remember we had to work that out. So yeah. Um, we get attacked. Ambush. <laughs> Ambush, yes. yes. Not by Drow, though. Hmm. By High Elves. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, not sure what's up with that. So they attack us. Yeah, they sort of pop up and come around. They're all wearing these... Blue robes with big white stripes down. Yeah, it's like a uniform of some kind, mm. which is clearly not important because you mentioned it. Mm. Mm. So yeah, we have no idea what's up with this. Serendipity did do a history check on those robes to see what they meant, and um, she um, she had never seen them anything like them before. But that was notable because she totally knows lots about the history of wizard fashion and yeah. So something's up with that. I speculated that maybe this is the fashion in the future. Mm. Did her fashion check indicate whether this fashion was good? <laughs> she, she really doesn't know anything about it. Just that. Oh, you mean whether it looks yeah. good. Mm -hmm. The only way you can tell if a fashion is good is by whether other people like it. Mm. So, you know, there's no way to know. So... How did this go? There was a one that popped up, a ranged wizard attacker type, yeah. um, and she shouted something in High Elvish, which John accidentally let us know was now, because until Hank, before he realized that none of us knew the language. Hank had bought a helm that lets him understand any language except for Abyssal and Supernal, and then I realized later that the, that part of world building was there was a bunch of stuff that made it really hard to learn High Elvish. So I thought that should be on the exceptions list too, of like really hard to understand languages even with magic. Mm. So after after telling him that she said now in High Elvish, I had to say actually she says Alidada, and you have no idea yeah. what it means. It completely changed our strategy. Um, <laughs> no, it didn't, because of course it was an ambush, 
everyone jumps out of hiding to attack us. A whole bunch of them teleported from behind walls and stuff. Yeah. There's like half walls. A whole bunch of them teleported. And some of them came up and engaged. And the other ones who couldn't quite make it far enough sort of ran, jumped into the air, and did this huge flying leap, this really far sort of flying leap. And they all jumped over Crooked and whacked her on the head with their, their sword as they landed on the other side. And all the rest of them came up and would attack one person, swirl around and flourish and stab Crooked. So they just... <laughs> Stabbed cricket like crazy. They were both the of course, the most dangerous party member first. You gotta take them out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> take out the leader, and then the rest will fall into confusion. <laughs> and at the end of all that, their leader comes out, and he's this guy. Is this guy wearing this sort of, I don't know. Well, I actually use a miniature of like this, like skull armor guy. This guy with like skull, skull armor that was pitch blue with a pitch blue sword. Yeah. So, there, was some, there was some discussion about what exactly pitch blue was. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm curious myself. Well, it's like blue, but, you know, super blue. Pitch blue. Okay. <laughs> All I really meant was, um, yeah, it was interesting. It was one of those, it was, a, it was like a space ball's ladder. <laughs> one of those things where, like, I knew I was saying a weird thing, but everyone felt the need to, to tell me that pitch blue doesn't make sense. <laughs> Um, anyway, well, he is what, colorblind. I, Maybe I, he doesn't know. <laughs> I was, Perhaps he thinks pitch blue is a thing. I was, uh, I was, I, I guess he's. I was trying to convey the sense of like a big, freaky, evil warlord in black armor, except yeah. it was like really bright blue instead. Yeah. So, it's it's like that, except kind of lame. And he had some of the white striping too. So he comes out, and he does some sort of warlordy challenge thing. To mark cricket. Mm, like, yeah, he yeah, looks he does, like does the look with the fingers. And leave leave eyes, my people and alone. Yeah. And so to, to cricket. And so I'm like, oh, it is on. She's, leader versus leader. Mono a mono. We're gonna do this thing. She's marked, and if she do, takes any turn where she doesn't attack him, she takes six damage. It never came up. Yeah, he stayed a little ways away from all of his guys. Didn't help. <laughs> He called me out, and I answered the challenge. <laughs> he thinks he's so tough, he doesn't know tough. So, there, um, and it's the party's turn, and the first thing that happens is Hank does something that everyone thinks is stupid, but turns out to be awesome. Typical. He uses the hook shot to hook shot over to where that first wizard that popped out She's still up in the battlement, sort of. Hmm. She's obviously going to be a ranged fighter. So he, he hook shots up right next to her. So now there's a barbarian standing next to their lone ranged fighter who has no support. Which, you know, that's, that's cool. But in order to hook shot up there, he draws opportunity attacks from everyone. Mm -hmm. And so they shred him. He, hmm. I think he goes to bloody. Every single one hit him. Yeah. And they did damage... Like lots of damage. Yeah. Yep, they bloodied him. They bloodied him on the we on his way to go and, and fight this this lone thing. So hmm. our big tough strap bugs out first round <coughs> to go fight the uh, the, the archer uh, archer wizardy type and get shredded in the process. <coughs> but it turns out that was actually a pretty good strategy. Hmm. It didn't seem it at the time. Uh, although no although he did realize partway through the combat that he had a teleport ability he could have used to go go to her instead of the hook shot, which would have saved him all the shredding. Hmm. Not but as dramatic. He, even that's okay because he gets extra bonus abilities when he's bloody. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Yeah, so he went up there, and it was actually really annoying. He goes up there, he uses his, his standard action to beam shot. He goes up there, and he uses an action point to hit the wizard, and uses some of his to, to knock her prone, which is the most annoying thing that he did. Yeah. Knocked her prone. Um, You'll be hearing that a lot in this combat. So I, may as, I may as well go into what happens just now yeah. first, because it, technically it's not until her turn. But yeah. she she retaliates with, with um, you know, in common, she says, uh, get out of here, or something like that, yeah. and shoots him with a beam that teleports him off, off the parapet down to the ground. So now she's, you know, prone, but Hank's not there anymore. So that kind of nullified what he was doing for now. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the rest of the party's all... Well, actually, they're together, and a few of them have come around them. They're, like, kind of around them from how they jumped. 
And that was when... It's time to turn things to our advantage. Yeah, that was when everything... Yes. When, when the party synergy... Yeah. Well, I mean, the very our very first reaction was like, oh, holy crap. You know, suddenly we're surrounded, numbered by some really tough guys. We're feeling like we might be in trouble. So we better... We start burning some dailies on this. I think we may have burned a few more, more dailies than we could have afforded if we're going to fight this drought later. But it certainly had results. <laughs> so... Um, Aurora does her black hole thing, sucks everyone in, uh, adjacent to her, uh, and weakens them. Uh, Serendipity, Van Goldstar and Melora, top of tower, Shepherd of Souls, does her pile of treasure illusion thing that also sucks people in. That's just... Mm -hmm. <coughs> Croesus, shattered time thing, which makes a huge area where if anyone... At any, uh, if they attack any of us, he gets to do opportunity attacks on them, and they got penalties. Uh -huh. he, he calls it making this his kitchen, because of the, that fight in the kitchen in the inn. <laughs> and for some weird reason, the, wife -doer. the area effect was larger than usual. Yeah. Hmm. It's probably because Alan Way. I don't know. So, so everyone is sucked in, immobilized, and weakened yeah. because they're next to Aurora. And they have to save out of all this stuff. And anyone who attacks anyone, because it's all within Croesus' yeah. area, Croesus can teleport next to them and do an opportunity attack. <laughs> so their turn comes. Well, no, I first there's Cricket mm. also. Oh, Cricket, right, yes. Cricket is dueling with their leader. Right. See, all this is a sideshow. This is just minions versus minions. Mm -hmm. It's really going to be decided by a fight between the leaders. Obviously. So, first thing Cricket does... This actually happens before the, they get weakened by Aurora. She hits the leader with Song of Discord. Um, the effect of Song of, Song of Discord is that the target makes an attack against an adjacent uh, ally. Mm. Uh, so I well, have him... And because of all these effects, he is adjacent to all his allies. Yeah. Which so, also defeats part of the purpose, because part of the idea was, you can't attack my allies because you have to keep attacking me. Mm -hmm. But then he got sucked right next to his ally. And then I made him attack one of his allies. Uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, but I actually hit with Song of Discord, so I got the hit effect instead of just the, you know, you did this effect. Target is dominated for a round. <laughs> so then his turn happens, and I have him give his sword to Aurora. So I'm like, this is awesome. I'm dueling this guy, and I'm still being a total pacifist. <laughs> I haven't harmed him at all. I made him hit one of his allies and then give his sword away. <laughs> so Aurora now has a pitch blue sword. So their turn, which the leader, was... The leader hits... Half of them couldn't even away. do anything. The rest of them try to hit, but they're weakened. And so Croesus, they hit, they hit various people. They mostly miss, because the only person they can reach is Aurora whose AC is <laughs> 35 or something, and when she's it's insane. It's yeah. so high, and when she's shining, it's even worse. It's like, it, all they can do is hit Aurora, which means missing. One of them crits, but it's a weakened, so she only does half damage, does like seven, 14 damage, half to seven. Croesus does a thing that makes her eat her own damage, so she takes 14 damage, plus every turn that someone does damage to them, because if because of Aurora's aura, they take five extra psychic damage. Six extra. So actually. six extra, yeah. yeah. So she hits Aurora, does six dam seven damage. She takes twenty damage from that. And it turns out it was radiant damage, which Aurora has resistance to. All oh, right, yes. Yeah, so she took. She took no damage. <laughs> I thought she took two. Two, two. Yeah, right. It's five radiant damage. Right. Resistance. She did seven. So yeah. Aurora yeah. took two. Aurora took points. two. She took twenty. Twenty. <laughs> And then the rest of them, like, missed, or occasionally one hit, and Croesus appeared next to them and stabbed them for yeah. damage. So basically, they just got destroyed during that round. <laughs> Only about half of them saved out of the immobilized, so they, they, the next round they should really get away from the weakened zone, at least. Yeah. And then it was our turn again. Yeah. Yeah. So. So Hank had been teleported away by... And she, and she said, stay down there. And he said, no. nope. And used one of his new abilities to teleport right next to her and <laughs> hit her again and knock her down again. <laughs> Which was really annoying. Yep. Um, now, 
What did Pika do against the leader in this round? No, he he did something. He pushed her or something. How did he... He teleported... He tried to get away from Cricket. Well, he no, saved out of the dark. No, no. How, what happened to... No, he... Oh, Ray, he didn't do anything at all that round because he, he was dominated. He just gave the start to Aurora. And then he saved out of then it? it? Then it was our round again. What did Cricket do in our round? In our round? Well, it's not saved. It's a, it's a one round. Wasn't it like a, a bola or something? I tried bola him. Yes, that's right. I tried bola him and I missed. Mm. It would have immobilized him. Which would have been nice. I don't remember anything particularly interesting about that round. Like, mostly you guys just wailed on them. Oh, Serendipity. Good gold star, more top or tower, shepherd of souls. She, um, she fireballed the area. <laughs> oh, this she was, was like, awesome. She fireballed the area. <laughs> boom. Boom. Hits them all. Except, and Aurora was in the range, but she has a feat that gives allies like a plus six on, mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Aurora's got insane defenses, so. Yeah. So she hits everyone except for Aurora, and she crits on one of them. And she has that, that, uh, staff. That if you crit with a firepower, it's not expended. <laughs> so she used an action point to do it again, yep. just two in a row. And I think it's a daily, right? Yeah, like, double boom, fireball. boom. Yeah, double daily fireball. <laughs> just smoked them. One of them was killed by that. The rest of them are all bloodied. Oh, just man. like destroyed yeah. them. I, I had spent my uh, glimpse of future daily, which meant I had a, a roll of sixteen banked up. Mm. Which I used on one of those to make sure it hit one of them. So like serendipity, and go start more top or top shut their souls roll to four or something, or mm. replace it with sixteen. So yeah, that was devastating. Yeah. <laughs> so daily so we, we devastated them the first round. Then they did practically nothing, which probably did more damage to themselves than. Mm -hmm. than um, I mean, one of them did more damage to herself than Aurora by ten times, mm -hmm. and the other gave his sword away. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was a bad round for them. And then it was our round, and it was a bad round for them. <laughs> and then it was their round again. Now, the, that was when the leader, who had managed to save out of the immobilize, ran away, taking attack of opportunity, ran away from the party, <laughs> and uh, so he was out of range of like his, his allies and stuff, and did the same thing to um, Croesus, said, leave my people alone. <laughs> and so Croesus has, they got to attack him, or you take yeah. six damage thing, and he's kind of like trying yeah. to stay away from his people. But Cricket still has that. Yeah. Because she's not done with him. <laughs> Meanwhile, the wizard on the t top is like, fine, if you want to be here, then you can stay here. She teleports out of there to the ground mm -hmm. and then shoots a beam that, that's going to mobilize um, Hank up on the parapet instead. But he has an ability called, what's it called? Something something, dodge, where he teleports. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> when, when you're hit with an attack, you teleport instead. You teleport adjacent to <laughs> yeah. the... Uh, to the target. Anyway, that's what happened. So she shoots an immobilize. <laughs> she teleports down. You can stay there. Shoots a beam, and he just teleports right next to her. Says nope, and knocks her prone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he knocks her prone next round. Yeah, but still, but but yeah. yeah. Again, she's knocked prone. <laughs> yeah, she's almost dead now. She's been and useless the whole battle. <laughs> So, so she's again unhappy. Very unhappy. Um, did we get? I don't think we got another round after that. I think it was. That was basically the end. Yeah, that was they, the they end. did a little bit oh, of attacking. There was back, also the thing about the sky fallers or something. Oh yes, of course. Yes. When she nuked them with fire twice in a row, they're, they're like da 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 da. Which they had no idea what yeah, it meant. Yeah, we don't know what it meant anymore. <laughs> and, it's another one of those. Whoops! Mm, I shouldn't I, have told them that. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of their next turn, there was above where the fireball went off. Because over the sky is like some kind of like red lightning effect that's been there ever since long ago, yeah. and all I of a sudden there was for. a cluster growing there, and these 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 blobs of magma <laughs> dropped around all around them and yeah. came to life and weird. formed electricity elementals, and they all started shouting, "Delano!" And they all were getting everyone was being attacked by these magma yeah. and lightning elementals. So. Mm. Because so, it, yeah. it seems like a strange defense. I don't think it's a defense. I think it's a side effect. Yeah. The, mm. It's interesting. I was reading in world building. There was an unspecified uh, lightning, um, the lightning. Lightning. The magma lightning. The magma lightning. lightning hits the city and left behind some strange effect. That's oh, all it said. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm actually assuming that. The, the, the they actually just the, the light the red dome over the sky wasn't built by them they just like buffed it into the defenses but it was caused by the 
that, so I'm assuming this is the weird effect. Yeah, that was when the mega volcano, like... Yeah, the second time the mega volcano hit them. <laughs> they probably should have a warning sign when we went through customs. Caution, if you detonate a fireball within the city limits, you will bring down magma upon yourself. Well. Or something like that. We need a handbook. Yeah, it's when the safest the city, city in the world. Dear Diary, Why is it whenever we go places people or creatures attack us. We didn't do anything. We just were approaching structure. And out of nowhere, these people in these really smart matching outfits, actually, they seem to be some kind of team or something. Hey, I wonder if there's some kind of sports team. All those blue and white stripes, it's quite, it's quite fetching. Anyway, out of nowhere, they just started attacking us. Not, hello, who are you? Or, could you please go away? Or, excuse us, this is our place, we don't want you to be here, or anything. They just, out of nowhere, start like, shouting in some language. I don't even know what it is. I assume it's some kind of elvish, because they appear to be elves. And start attacking us. So, um, and then, it was very, right in the middle of this thing, they all suddenly were all around me, so, anyway. And I was getting a bit frustrated, because the one guy attacking Cricket, and that's not right. What does she ever do to anybody? And then, and then he handed me a sword. Just like, here. And I was, what? Why are you giving me your sword? I do Okay, he gave me his blue sword. It's like pitch blue. It's really quite blue. I've never seen such a blue sword before. So I put it in my sheath, and then he looked really angry later, and I'm just like, what? What's your problem? And he's gibbering on in his language, and it's like, why don't you speak common, or whatever it is we speak? I think, I just, you know, sometimes I think things would be a lot easier if we could just talk to one another. If I could just, like, speak right to their mind, I could say, thank you for the sword, I appreciate the gift, why are you in <sighs> Oh well. Anyway, he attacked my friend Cricket, so it's clear what I have to do. But, I sure appreciate this nice new sword. I don't know. I guess I should give it a name to think about that. Um, guys, uh, We're supposed to be fighting Drow. I mean, not that this is bad. I these guys are almost fighting fair. There aren't none of them have changed shape or grown an extra mouth. Or well, the the lava falling from the sky is a little disturbing. But I'm pretty sure Stacia said that we had to save her pretend elf family from Drow. Okay, gather them all together. Fire, 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 fire. Yeah. Fire, fire's good. I got a better idea. More fire. Fire, 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 fire. Fire is really good. So, this is what it comes to. It has come to this. Ano a mano. Party leader versus party leader duel and then the winner will be victorious and no one else needs to get hurt i should probably have told the rest of my party about that before they proceeded to utterly demolish the rest of these attackers but oh well i can still take that guy that guy with big horned helmet like what is he compensating for hm. he's made him toss his sword away so this is an even fight i'm gonna go up there and i'm gonna Punch him in the neck! Uh, or, uh, you know, something. I will defeat him! Yes. You and me. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at you. Teleporting is fun!